Sri Ramakrishna was an Indian mystic that was born in 1836 and he passed away in 1886. He practiced many Hindu traditions, including Advaita Vedanta, which is the non-dualistic teaching that all is Brahman or God. We are also taught that what we are experiencing here through our limited perception is ultimately an illusion called Maya. Ramakrishna ultimately taught us of the unity of all faiths and religions, each as their own path to the ultimate realization of God. So in order to look past the illusion, we have to put down what we know and try looking past the walls of logic that have been built in our mind. Sri Ramakrishna states, You see many stars in the sky at night, but not when the sun rises. Can you therefore say that there are no stars in the heavens during the day? O oh man, because you cannot find God in the days of your ignorance, say not that there is no God. So the same way that we have so many uh, revelations and understandings throughout our lives based on what we experience and what we go through, Sri Ramakrishna is challenging us to consider the unknown and then what it may actually hold, even though that we cannot actually see it. So the same way that throughout our lives, through our experiences, we have so many understandings uh, and realizations, uh, here we're being challenged to consider what we cannot see or what we are unable to see with our immediate perception. Just because that someone, you know, let's say it's like a castaway kind of person or, or something like that, somebody who has no access to civilization for whatever reason and they never were exposed to music, does music not exist, you know? If you were to tell him the concept of music and for whatever reason, you know, he was not, music was never in his mind, would he be able to prove just by on his perception that there is no music in the world? When the music stops, has all music ceased to exist? Of course not. The same way that the stars in this example are not destroyed or they don't vanish um, from existence when the sun comes up. And we're being told here, and this is, I love this example so much, that the same goes for God or for the unseen, what we cannot perceive with our human minds. This existence that we have and this existence that we, you know, have, have the privilege of being a part of is so much more complex than we can literally ever imagine. So, Sri Ramakrishna is pretty much saying, so how on earth can you simply lean on just your own understanding? So reading this bit reminds me of how growing up, I couldn't really see the stars that much or the solar system. You know, I, there were telescopes and everything, but going outside and looking up at the stars, you couldn't really see too much. It was mostly darkness. That's because I lived, um, you know, in an area that had a lot of light pollution. There were a lot of buildings around and there were a lot of things going on that made it extremely difficult for the light that's coming from light years away all the way into space to reach my eyes. The most that I could get was maybe a few glimpses of what I'm pretty sure was like Venus uh, and some pretty big and bright stars that were able to shine through alongside the moon, of course. Thank God I could still see that. But it wasn't until my early adulthood when I traveled and I traveled into the desert where there was literally almost no light pollution. You know, there was some, you know, there we had electricity, but it's like, there was no skyscrapers, there was no, there wasn't a wave of uh, headlights from traffic that uh, w was causing light pollution. So for the very first time in my life, I was able to see the sky as it really is during the night. And it was actually a very shocking experience. You know, for the first time I had this fascination of you know, being out at night, going hiking at night and just looking at the stars because I could actually see it. You know, I heard, always heard people talking about the constellations. Usually they would be looking at it through telescopes, through, you know, special devices, you know, and maybe vaguely you would be able to see it. But where I was in the desert, you could see it as clear as day, the same way that you could just look at a cloud. You could see the Big Dipper right there. It was incredible. So this quote here concludes the metaphor in tying in how we can recognize the eternal or God, whatever you'd like to say, 
under different circumstances than we're used to, where we currently are right now, where you're currently in your life, whether you're in high school or your college, or you have a job that's taking up 11 to 12 hours a day of your work, you know, um, being able to understand uh, meditation or something is going to be difficult, you know? So just because that you can't see it or understand it now, don't think that it's impossible. Most Americans, including myself, uh, we grew up with, you know, technology, media, especially the younger generation, uh, which I'm a part of, that grew up with smartphones and computers and everything. We couldn't get away from what the culture was pushing. On top of that, there were all these different ideologies that were kind of being shoved down our throats, whether we kind of knew it or not. And all of this made it very difficult for us to develop a healthy spiritual understanding of life, which, you know, in my view personally, is why we have so many people in America who refuse to even consider a higher power in general. They're so embedded in, like I said, these worldly things, the culture, TV, movies, you know, we, we don't we don't have to have a dull second with all of these luxuries, but constantly having all these luxuries, I really do feel have pushed the entire generation into being very hostile towards spirituality. Alongside, there's many other factors, of course. You have the rigidity of, you know, certain religions that are practiced in the United States. And of course, with the exception of the growing new age spiritualists, you know, in the United States and in the West in general, who have become to accept the power of the universe behind all of creation. You actually see a lot of this in social media and in certain small towns that are very spiritual throughout America. But anyway, as I grew up with all of these distractions that indoctrinated my, you know, eternal essence into something artificial, it was so difficult for me to even begin to understand meditation and spirituality. Similarly, and this is why I love this quote from Sri uh, Ramakrishna, that it is kind of just like how seeing the stars, you know, in the sky very clearly for the first time. It wasn't until I made certain changes in my life, you know, in terms of my location, my environment, who I exposed myself to, the people around me, that I was able to acknowledge this completely other side to reality. And so this connection that I began to have with the Tao, with Brahman, with God, whatever you want to say, the universe, whatever word works for you, all increased more and more, really to the point uh, that I really can't go back. And oftentimes it feels like a little bit of a blessing and a curse. I kind of I kind of understand why some say ignorance is bliss now. So Ramakrishna also said here, there are pearls in the deep sea, but you must hazard all perils to get them. If you fail to get them by a single dive, do not conclude that the sea is without them. Dive again and again, and you are sure to be rewarded in the end. So also in the quest for the Lord, if your first attempt to see him proves fruitless, do not lose heart. This furthers the point from the first quote that understanding what we don't understand, so to speak, may take time, you know, finding a place where you're able to see the stars or find pearls might take a long time. And it also might not be something that you can force or have a formula for to say, well, I'm, I'm going to recognize God on this day, or I'm going to have an enlightenment on this day. It's like, you can't really put that in your calendar. It's not going to work like that because it may not be as logical as what is behind this door. Let me check what is behind this door. Even when your environment changes, when you make radical changes that may allow you to readjust and understand silence and meditation and God, uh, whether it's through nature, it's through love, through service, Whatever it may be, you may not find it on day one. You probably won't, unless maybe maybe you are somebody like Ramakrishna or uh, some of these other sages like uh, Ramana Maharshi. True peace does not come from achieving or discovering God, but actually accepting things as they truly are and then allowing it to unfold from there. It cannot be forced.